This video here is showing an immune cell chasing a bacteria around uh, the body and an immune cell doesn't have any eyes and it can't smell. So how does it know where this bacteria is? Hello and welcome. I'm Sarah and today I'm just going to go over receptors and ligands and hormones with you in case it's something that you're new to as in understanding biochemistry. And I'm going to base it around how light is used inside the body. So that would be ultraviolet light for today. We'll dive straight in and I'll use a hormone as an example for something interacting with a receptor. Now, hormones are chemical messengers produced in the body and they control different processes. And there are about 50 hormones in the human body and hormones bind to receptors on the cell and then something happens. So it's like the, the hormone presses a button and the receptor is sort of like uh, the button that gets pressed and hormone levels and their receptors fluctuate. So they're ever changing. And this is what's really important. Hormone receptors are a bit like a person waiting for a bus. They're not always there. So sometimes there might be a progesterone receptor there and sometimes there might not be. And that's a whole other topic I won't go into just now. But just the take home so far is that you need the receptor and the ligand for something to happen. Now, different hormones are made by usually glands in the body, but also your fat cells can make hormones such as leptin and something called aromatase, which changes testosterone into estrogen, usually uh, estrogen E1, estrone, which is weaker and not so useful as estradiol. And also importantly, the mitochondria make hormones as well, things like pregnenolone, which then gets broken up into lots of other important sex hormones. On the whole, as we get older, the levels of our hormones decline, especially things like growth hormone, estradiol, testosterone. Cortisol usually starts to go up as we get older. And for some people, their levels of insulin goes up as well. That's not supposed to happen, but it can do. Here in this slide, I've just gone over again that receptors are sort of like buttons, but also they can be beacons. Now we're moving into how light can affect these receptors. And receptors are proteins that are made by genes or DNA in the nucleus of your cell. And if we think about the receptor as being the eyes and the ears for the inside of a cell, the DNA, a bit like a CEO in his or her office. Now, things which act as button presses or beacons, as I've said, would be ligands. And we're talking about hormones today just to keep it simple, but then things like vitamin D, that's going to be a ligand as well. Lots of plant molecules, plenty of nutraceuticals, they're different drugs and pharmaceuticals. So basically when the receptors activate, it's going to make something happen and receptors can get blocked as in the wrong ligand can go in. They can get overused and then they go back inside the cell. So that's called down regulation. And like I said earlier, what's really important with how receptors work is that they fluctuate. They're not always there on the cell membrane. So what I've drawn out for you here, on the left, we've got hormones. On the right, we've got receptors. So you can see that there's a triangle-shaped hormone that's going to look for a triangle-shaped receptor, and then a circular one for a circle-shaped receptor, and so on, so that the hormones or the ligands can recognize their receptors based on shape. But unfortunately, inside a cell, it's like a football match or Fremont Street in Las Vegas. It's super packed and it's like trying to get to the other side of Fremont Street, trying to look for your friend. It would take for ages or forever if these molecules were just using Brownian motion alone and randomly finding the receptors. So there has to be other methods by which these hormones can find their receptors quickly. So one of them is the resonance of the ligand and the receptor. That's why I said that they're a bit like beacons rather than buttons and locks and keys and things like that. But also light is really important in this communication between the hormones and the receptors. And hormones such as thyroid hormone T3, which runs your metabolism, and many other hormones carry light as information uh, um, into the receptor. So it's a double or in another layer of information that gets transferred. Rather than just the hormone going into the receptor and delivering itself, it's also delivering light uh, as a message. So, so the way that our hormones work inside the body has got another layer of complexity. So I just find this absolutely fascinating. This video here is showing an immune cell chasing a bacteria around uh, the body and an immune cell doesn't have any eyes and it can't smell. So how does it know where this bacteria is? Well, this is what I was saying about the light because bacteria emit about 50 to 100 times more light than our cells. So the immune system knows 
how to chase the bacteria around the body and engulf them to protect us. People who are new to this idea of hormones carrying light, if you look at the structure of things like estrogen, progesterone, testosterone, thyroid, cortisol, melatonin, they, they've all got ring structures. They're aromatic molecules. So they're very geared up for absorbing light from the sun via other molecules or also absorbing light as in the UV light inside the body. So just so you know, estrogen basically grows life and progesterone refines and stabilizes it. And they always work together. And progesterone basically kills just enough cells to keep life going. And progesterone is really important in apoptosis, which would be killing uh, unwanted cells, including cancer. And it's really, really overlooked. Testosterone, I would basically say for simplicity, separates the sexes and it kind of keeps the species going. Thyroid would be your metabolism or your accelerator pedal. And cortisol, we can think about as a fear and light measurer. So we can work out how frightened or stressed we are and how much light we're receiving based on our cortisol levels. Insulin, people tend to demonize it or think it's just for diabetics, but it's actually a food supply measure or marker. So traditionally with our ancestors, if they had high insulin when it around summer and autumn, that that's indicating there's a plentiful food supply because when it comes to reproduction and pass, moving on through the species, we obviously need to make sure there's enough food as well. Then melatonin sort of is a darkness measure, a controller of sleep, but it also controls cell death and repair. So it's both a hormone of light and a hormone of darkness because melatonin can ca carry light, store it, and then release it again later in, in the night. And prolactin is something hardly anybody ever talks about. And it's one of my favorite hormones because it is a bit of a naughty hormone because it's only meant to come out when somebody's breastfeeding. Yet I've seen men with really high prolactin, often because they've been fiddling about with certain supplements to raise testosterone. Not there's anything wrong with that, but some supplements mixed together can raise prolactin. And also if you stay up uh, too, too late at night, that triggers high prolactin because a mother who's breastfeeding would be needing to stay up late. And prolactin interferes with um, metabolism of fats and glucose and such like. So it's another layer of when people are struggling with their weight and can't get rid of it and they're not sleeping properly, testing the prolactin can be really helpful. So there's ways to lower prolactin. And the one I'll tell you today is going to bed earlier. It also interacts with dopamine. So dopamine is going to inhibit prolactin. So some people have got high prolactin because they've got low dopamine. Thank you very much for watching. I'll be making more videos about hormones, but I've also got a hormone uh, course that sometimes I do live and sometimes it's pre-recorded. So if you're really interested in the course, uh, let me know. Thank you and goodbye.